What's up YouTube? I'm Tom from Blender Tutor and today we're going to go over rigid body physics in Blender 2.8. As always, check me out on Instagram at thomaslappies3d where I post daily art and that's the first place you'll be notified when I post a new tutorial. Speaking of, I posted a new tutorial last week on fluid simulation in Blender 2.8 so check that out at the link above. Also, make sure to subscribe for weekly Blender tutorials and hit that bell to get notified when I post new videos. So if you don't know what rigid body physics are, it's basically in computer graphics and video games, anything that uses any type of physics, it's seen a lot in video games. They're obviously used in visual effects a lot also. Anytime a building is crumbling or an explosion is happening and things are getting flown around. And also they're just kind of fun to play around with. All right, let's get started. So before we get into the tutorial, uh, here is what we're gonna be making today. Just kind of a physics tower, kind of like Jenga. Just to show you some of the things you could do with the rigid body physics. From here, you could do a lot more. You could combine different types of physics at the same time. So you could add smoke, fire, explosions to the rigid body. You could use it with fluid simulation. You could even do it with cloth simulation, which I'd like to do a tutorial on that in the future. Here's a couple other things I've used the rigid body physics for. I made my cheesy boy piece and I filled up the tub of cheese balls with the rigid body physics. Right here, I, I made like a little plastic ball pit and I just used the array modifier, which is how we're gonna set up our tower. I just duplicated a bunch of echo spheres. And now if I play it, they all fall loosely into the pit. Obviously this isn't the most exciting example of physics, but this is just a quick example of how you can use them. All right, so with a new project file, let's take our default cube. In fact, one more time, let's save real quick. I always forget to save these. All right, so let's take our default cube, scale it along the X by three, scale it up on the Z by 0.5, and let's go into our physics tab Click on a rigid body. We're gonna change a few settings real quick. I'm gonna bring this mass down to 0.5. I'm gonna uh, surface response. I'm gonna bring friction up to 0.8. So I'll go over some of these in a second. I'm gonna delete our light. So a few things in this physics tab. In the rigid body physics, there are a lot fewer options than there are in like smoke or fluid simulation. We only have two types. We have active or passive. Passive would be something like a floor or a container that you want your physics objects to like fall onto, but it's not actually moving. Active means that gravity is actively affecting our object and it's being moved around by other forces. And that's what we're gonna want our block to be. In this collisions area for shape, we currently have convex, convex hull. I'm gonna switch that to mesh. With something as simple as this block, convex hull would be okay, but mesh is a little, uh, in this instance, it's probably the same actually, but mesh is generally more accurate if you have a more complicated object. So just in, as, in, as an example, I'm gonna bring in a sphere real quick. Scale it up and I'm going to delete half of it just so it's kind of like an open bowl. And I'm going to add a physics object, change it to passive, but right now you can see it's set to convex hull. I'm going to scale down our block a little bit. And now if I hit Alt A to play, you can see it just kind of lands on top. Even though there's clearly a hole, it's not going into it, it's resting on top of the object. That's because convex hull for our sphere, it closes off the object. It will not go inside of it. You need to change the shape to mesh 
to interact with anything like this. So now that it's set to mesh, if we play, you can see our block falls right inside of it. So I just wanted to show you that. I'm gonna actually delete this though, because we won't need it. I'm gonna actually bring in a plane, just scale that up real quick. We'll give it a rigid body and change that to passive. And now if we play, you can see our block falls right on our plane. You go back to the first frame, bring that down a bit more. Now, I just want to show you an easy way to duplicate objects for physics. We're going to go to modifiers, add an array modifier. Set that to zero. I'm going to change this to 1.1. We'll move it next to it and do three of those. And the reason I want it to be spaced out a little bit, instead of typing one, which would, it would make an array of objects basically all touching each other. Uh, and with physics simulations, you don't want that because at least in Blender, if I were to have three objects that were all physics objects touching on the first frame, they would kind of just explode away from each other because they're overlapping. So we just want them to have a little bit of space in between them so they're not immediately going to explode. Now for my cheesy boy piece or for the ball pit that I showed earlier, I, I would have added a second array object, set that to zero and then 1.1 on the Z and just added a bunch of these. The only reason I'm not going to do that for this tutorial is because it would look a little more boring with everything stacked up like this, but you could obviously do that for like a brick wall or something if you wanted to just quickly create a bunch of objects like that. Just a couple array modifiers will do the trick. I'm going to delete this one for now though. I'm going to apply this array modifier. We'll go into edit mode. I'm going to hit P and separate by loose parts. So now I have three separate objects, but they all have the same object origin as the original right now. So you can see this is the original. The orange ball is right in the center, but this one, the origin is in the middle of the first brick and this one also. So now if I were to, let's say move these up and hit play, they all act really weird because the origin is so far away from the center of the object. So what we want is to reset the origin. So select all of your objects that were created in your array modifier and type in origin, set origin, origin to center of mass by volume. And now you can see that they all have an origin point in the center of each mesh. So now they don't spin all crazy like they did before. So I'm just gonna rotate these by 90 for front view, move them fairly close to the ground. Okay. Now I'm gonna just duplicate these That looks good. I'm gonna rotate these by 90. That way it's gonna kind of look like a Jenga tower. So now that I have these two layers, I'm going to duplicate that. Shift D, move it up along the Z. Try to keep the spacing similar. So now you can see when I play the physics simulation, they all kind of rest on each other. So now I'm just going to do that a few more times. So now that we have our tower built and the physics are all set up for it, I'm going to bring in an object. I'll do a monkey. And I'm gonna move that back on the Y. This is gonna kind of be similar to the fluid simulation where we want an object to 
interact with our physics. So this monkey, uh, we're gonna add a physics rigid body to this. It's gonna be active and animated. That way we can set keyframes on it. I'm gonna scale it up a bit. And I'll start it back here on frame one. I location. And basically before this starts exploding too bad, I want to knock this over. So maybe on frame 15, I'm gonna move this along the Y so that it knocks into everything. Add another keyframe there. And now if I play this, <laughs> our monkey ruins everything. Then it explodes it. And then the one I did earlier, I did two monkeys. I'm gonna scale that down a little bit just so it doesn't knock it over so crazy. And I will duplicate that and add another one right there. I'm gonna to have to delete these keyframes. So X, delete keyframes. X, delete keyframes. Move that right there. Maybe move it up a little bit so it knocks into a different area. So I'll add a new keyframe location. I'll go back to 15, move it along the X. So I'll put it like right there and location. Now play, there we go. And what you can actually do is just bake everything so you don't need to rebake it every time you play. So we can just do bake all physics. Now we could kind of scrub through and look at it. And just to give some lighting in here, let's add in an environment texture. I'm gonna open up an HDRI from hdrihaven.com. Link in the description. There we go. And I will just turn on transparent. Yeah. And the other thing that would be useful is um, you could bake all of our physics to uh, keyframes so that we can render this out without worrying about the bake messing up or anything. There are multiple reasons you might want to bake to uh, keyframes. For one, you'd don't have to rely on the physics system anymore. Once you bake it to keyframes, you can actually delete the physics modifier off of your objects. So for instance, if I wanted these objects to interact with smoke or fluid or some kind of other physics simulation, I could bake everything to a keyframe and then start a new physics simulation with like smoke or something. So anyway, let's just Highlight our objects. And type in keyframe, bake two keyframes. This will actually take a second, so save before you do that, especially with as many objects we have and as many frames as we have. I might bring this down to like 120 just for right now and hit OK, and that will take a second. Actually, that went pretty quickly, but depending on how many objects you have in your scene, you can now see we have all these keyframes down here. And that way it's a lot easier to scrub through and not have to worry about things resetting or messing up. So now with everything going all crazy, I'll reset my camera. With this kind of thing, it looks really cool with like a fisheye lens kind of. So I'm gonna go to a really low wide angle lens, maybe even like 12 millimeters. And then just bring this forward so it's kind of flying towards the camera. Hit Control B 
to kind of mask out the rendering so it's only rendering inside the view of our camera. And these look especially cool if you add in some motion blur. All right, so apparently after some reading, um, motion blur does not work in Eevee for objects yet. It is, it will do motion blur for camera movement. So if I were to like rotate the camera, Then I get some motion blur, but unfortunately you can't do that in Eevee. So if we just switch over to cycles real quick. Now I need to turn it back on. Motion blur, I'll do like 0.65 256 frames. Try that. All right, so yeah, um, that is a quick tutorial on rigid body physics in Blender 2.8. There's a lot of fun stuff you can do with this. So if you guys make anything with this and post it on Instagram, make sure to tag me at Thomas Latley's 3D. I would love to see it, and I will repost your work in my story. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions leave a comment below or if you have any ideas for future tutorials you'd like to see from me. Make sure to subscribe for weekly Blender tutorials and hit that notification bell to be notified of any time I post a new video.